Hi, welcome to this episode on Microsoft Fabric and Azure Data Engineering. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the steps to connect to and append multiple Excel files in SharePoint folder using Fabric Data Flow Gen 2. We're going to write the data to Azure SQL database for further analysis and upload additional new data to the SharePoint folder and refresh in the data flow and query again in the Azure SQL database to see the new data. So let's get started. If you're new to this channel, please click on the subscribe button and enable the bell icon to be notified of new videos. Let's go through the project. I'm going to come to my SharePoint and of course I'm going to have all of this data flow to Azure SQL 2020 to 2025 data. And in one of the files, the data flow to Azure SQL 2020, I've got these four columns of data that contains 10 records for the 2020. Now the data is stored in an Excel table. I'm going to click on the table design contextual ribbon tab and I can see sales. 2020 as the meaningful table name. When I open the 2023 in an Excel on the web, I'm going to see 2023, come to the table design, you can see 2023, and so on. So I'm going to come to the app.powerbi.com in this Fabric to Azure workspace. I'm going to create a new data flow gen tool. I want to get data from the SharePoint folder. To do that, under the new query of the data flow gen 2, I'm going to click on get data and then I'll choose the option at the bottom and I'm going to set for SharePoint folder, click on that and of course I need the site URL. Now to get the site URL, I'm going to come to my SharePoint. Unfortunately, this wouldn't work. So this is what I recommend. Let's want to get all of this Excel file. Just open one of them in Excel on the web like this and then come to your URL and copy everything from here. Okay, to the left. So you're probably going to see the name of your organization around here and make sure you don't copy this um, underscore layout everything here is what you needed ctrl c to copy and i'm going to come here and ctrl v to paste in the site url of course this is not going to work because we need to make some modifications to the url so i'm going to copy everything select to this point and then delete and this is what i needed okay so i'm going to choose the edit connection and of course you can use your authentication card such as your organization account or basic I'm going to go with my organization account because this is just within my tenant. So this is fine. Click on next. I'm going to see the preview folder data that contains the content, the name, extension, date accessed, modified, created, attributes, folder path. I'm going to click at the bottom here, create. Cool. Now I want to apply filter to this extension. So I want to see only .xlsx extension. So click on this and I'll choose the text that contains dot excel sx extension click ok this simply means if other files such as dot doc or dot ppt contains data flow they will automatically be disregarded so this is really good and i'm going to come to the name column and i want to apply filter that contains data flow gen so don't forget i want to pick all of this data flow to azure sql name of data so i'm going to type in data flow because all my data flow are in all caps can you see in uppercase so click ok i'm just going to filter down to all the five 2020 to 2025. So this is fine. So I'm going to come to the content. I'm going to right click and remove other property columns. So each of the Excel file is stored as a binary. So when I click on this path, I'm going to see the binary file. So this is fine. So we will go ahead and access the property columns inside the binary file. To do that, I'm going to click on add column and under the general, click on the custom column. And I'm going to go with this column name. This doesn't matter, but this matters, the custom column formula. I'm going to use a function called excel.workbook and function. Now I'm going to open the bracket and this requires workbook as a binary so to supply the workbooks that are in this content i'm going to click on this content in the available columns and this is what i need to do go ahead and click ok and then we're going to have this custom column that contains the properties such as the name the data the kind item and so on now i want to focus on the name of the table not the sheet name okay so i'm going to click on this expandable icon and i'm going to deselect the whole thing i want to select the name and data and then i can filter out the sheet one 
Okay, so I'm going to come to this name column, click on this, and then I want to filter out this shit one. So I'm going to add the 2020 to 2025 table names. So we have the 2020 to 2025. Cool. Now, I don't need this name again, so I can delete on my keyboard, and I can do the same thing for the content. Click on the content, delete. Alternative, I can right click and then choose remove columns, doesn't matter. So I'm going to see the data itself. So this is for the 2021, and let me check this for the 2020, and this should be 2022, and this should be 2023, 24, and 25. Now, it's a good practice to double check whether these are exactly what you need, okay? So fine. So I'm going to go ahead and dynamically append, combine all of these files. So to do that, I'm going to come here and use a function called table.combine function. Now, the table.combine requires just a table. So this is going to be the intermediate step of the last step. And then I want to access all this table. Now, all of these are inside this column called data. So I'm going to open a square bracket and type in data as the column name, exactly what I have here. And then I can close the bracket and hit enter. So this is going to give me a dynamic append of all the files. So this simply means if any column is moved in either 2023 or 2024, it wouldn't affect this result in the Power Query Cool. So I can go on and write this data to the destination. So I'm going to click on the Add Data Destination. And I want to write to Azure SQL Database. Now, I'm going to come to the portal.azure.com and I want to open my SQL database. So click on this to open. And then under the left panel here, I want to choose the query editor. Click on that. And then I'm going to sign it using either my entry ID, previously known as the, as the Azure Active Directory or my SQL Server Authentication. So I'm going to go with the entry ID. This is much easier and faster. And then I can click on this. I can see I've got only one table. So I want to create a table in this destination. Now I'm going to come to data flow. Before I create the table, I want to change this data types of this ID, salary, and year column from a decimal to a whole number data type. So I'm going to hold down my control key and I click on the salary and then the J. So this is how to perform a non-contiguous column selection. So I can right click on any one of the three. And then I want to choose the change type to a own number that is an integer data type in SQL environment. Fine. So I'm going to create this four columns in a table name. So I'm going to come here and write a create table statement. I'm going to call this one test. And I can go on and define my columns. I'm going to call the first one as ID. This is going to be int data type comma. And then I'm going to have the name. This is going to be variable character. Let's just do maybe um, 100 and comma. And I need the salary. This is going to be integer data type comma. And then we need the year, which is going to be integer data types. Okay. So I want to make sure that I have the ID, name, salary, year exactly in my create table statement. This is fine. So I can go on and run this and this succeeded. Let's just check the structure out. So I'm going to type test as the table name and go on and select. Okay, so I'm going to come to the results tab and we have four columns. Cool. So I'm going to come to the data flow and write this data to that table test. So Azure SQL database and I need the server name to get the server name from your Azure platform. I'm going to come here. Let me just duplicate this table. And once I duplicate the table, I can go back. Again, I'm just going to step back and then go back to the same SQL database. And I want to copy my server name. So this is my server name. So that's what I need. Come back here and control V. I can write the name of the database, but this is an optional argument. So I'm going to enable edit. And I want to choose the authentication kind. This is going to be basic or organization or service principle. I'm going to use the basic. So I need the username. Now to get a username, so I'm going to click on this server name. And it's going to take me to the SQL server, and I'm going to see the server admin, which is the same as the username that I specified when I created this Azure SQL database. So let's come back 
and control V and I'm going to type in a password and once I'm done click on next okay so I'm going to say choose destination target so I can of course load into a new table that will be created automatically in the Azure SQL but I love to create my table so I'm going to use an existing table and I want to choose my database and I want to choose the name of the table the test table so I can see the test and I can see the preview the four columns I can see the data types and no rows so this has been selected click on next and I'm going to provide the destination settings such as the upload update method either I want to append or replace but I want to actually replace the destination so I'm going to see the column mapping these are the source column names and then the destination and then the data types so click on save settings so this will automatically be grilled out fine so at the bottom i'm going to see data destination sql server database now this is not on-prems sql server you're going to see the server name is actually different from what we have in the on-prems so this is the azure sql database so i can go on and use the publish so this will publish the data into the destination I'm going to come and click on this ellipsis and as soon as I see all of these options turning or enabled, this simply means this has either failed or succeeded. So I'm going to click on refresh history and I'm going to see the status. So this succeeded. Fine. Let's go to the destination and query the data. So I'm going to log in again and then perform some query. So I'm going to select all the rows from the test table and run and there we go so we can see all the records for the 2020 to 2025 now let's check this out by writing a uh, year and i want to sum the salary and i'm going to call this one total salary okay and i'm going to use the group by clause so group by and i want to group by the year column and I can run the query. Okay, so I can see the 2020-21 when I scroll down to 2025. Cool. Now I'm gonna to come to my on-prems on my laptop, and of course, I'm gonna have this 2026. So I want to actually load this supplementary or new data into my shipment folder. To do that from here, I can turn on the auto save and I'm gonna choose my OneDrive, which is associated with my personal. MVP tenant and there we go. So when I see this auto save, this simply means a copy has been saved in my SharePoint with this name data flow to Azure SQL 2026. And of course, I can see the table name is sales 2026. I'm going to come back to my data flow. Now I can schedule the refresh. I can refresh now. I'm going to click on this refresh. So as soon as I click on the refresh, I'm going to see refreshing data and I'm going to see this little icon that is moving. So I'm going to wait and as soon as this stops, I can come back to the ellipses and check this out. So I'm going to hold on for a moment. I'm going to click on the ellipses again and I can check the refresh history. We should have two events. Okay, there we go. So we have the succeeded, so both succeeded. Now I'm going to come to the destination and query this again so for now I've only ha I have the 2020 to 2025 so when I query this I'm gonna have the 2026 so I'm gonna scroll down and there we go so we have the 2026 data which is absolutely fantastic so now when I come back here of course we can use the schedule refresh so I can under the data flows tab click on the refresh and then I can specify my time zone and I can enable days and I can choose the refresh frequency either daily or weekly, any one that I want to do. And then I can specify the time, the AM or PM, depending on what you want. And then we're going to have the send refresh failure notification to data flow owner or this contact, which could be a security group and so on. So for now, this is how we can perform data engineering from the SharePoint folder to Azure SQL database using the data flow gen tool in Microsoft Fabric. I trust you this video. If you do, like, share with your friends, comment, and please make sure you follow me for more videos. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.